God understands the requirement of a parent. And so God is not looking down at you like, why didn't you spend seven hours with me today? Why didn't you spend six hours with yeah, me today? Yeah, like an insecure and friend. No, God understands the requirement that it takes to be a parent. Welcome to Growing with the Nearest podcast. I'm Sonia Nira. And I'm Brian Nira. And we're on a journey to learn and grow with you in the areas of faith, purpose, and relationships. Yes, and on today's episode, we are going to be talking about your relationship with God after having kids. Yeah, I remember for me, the moment I knew my relationship with God changed after having kids, we were still in the hospital with Zayden. And we had kind of an extended stay at the hospital with Zayden. And I remember holding him. It was like the middle of the night and our room was dark and I was holding him. And I am like overwhelmed with this love that I have for him. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking you've never done anything for me and there's nothing you can do for me to change this love. Mm. And I heard the Lord say, and Sonia, that's how I feel about how I feel about you. That's deep. That's deep. And it was like, oh yeah, I, I knew that like rationally. Like, there's nothing I can do for God or not do for God that will change His love for me. But I knew it experientially in that moment mm. of like, I'm looking at my son. Like, you have a whole life ahead of you, and I don't know what's gonna happen in it. But I know one thing: it doesn't matter what you do or don't do for me. It will never take away how much I love you. Yeah. And so for me, you know, I think the question: How did your relationship with God change after having kids? I feel like the expected response might be like negative things like, Oh, I stopped having time to like spend time with the Lord or X, Y, Z. And you know, those things are all like true. We can talk about like the practicals of that. But for me, I've been able to understand how much he loves me Mm. more and how he sees me more. Mm. Like even like the constant direction redirection I have to give our toddler constant redirection. We have to give Zayden And that's where he's at. It's like normal. He's supposed to have to have constant redirection in this season. Yeah. And I think to myself all the time, this is exactly how God treats me. (laughs) He's Mm. constantly having to redirect me. Mm. He's constantly having to be like, son, I just said, don't do that. Mm. Oh, he talked to you I said, I said, don't think that way. Yeah, yeah, that's true. No, but seriously. That's good. That's good. You know, and he has a a way better tone than I do. He's very gentle and kind. But there is moments when he's stern. But just like there's, there's. Areas and seasons of our life as believers when we are like baby Christians in those areas, right? Like we we're immature in those areas of development in our Christianity. And we have to literally, we're literally like toddlers. Yes. We literally are like toddlers. And and that's the phase that we're in right now. I'll be able to relate more and more as our children's progress through their seasons. I just think each season will be a different revelation of how God relates to me in my stages of development with him. And so for me, it's been a positive change with the Lord um, because I just am able to relate to me being his child um, and him being the parent, like his point of view of me. Yeah, that's so good. I think, you know, when you were taught, when you were saying everything that you were saying, one thing I was thinking about for a lot of people, I think that from season to season, it's easy to like miss, miss what God did in the season before and how he related to you in the season before. And it's easy. So that, that was kind of the case for me at the beginning when we had a child, it was like, Oh man, I miss, I got, I miss the times that I could just spend endless time with you. I I had so much time to spend with you. God, I miss yeah. the I miss the moments where it's like, you know, yeah, I could like get up bit. and like go get and my coffee yes. and like snuggle on the couch. Yeah. And now it's like, mommy. 100%. You know, <laughs> I poo pooed. It's yeah. like, okay, all right. This romantic time with the Lord is done. Exactly. <laughs> but I think from season to season, what you, you, what I'm learning is I'm learning how to just appreciate the, in, like the intentionality and grace of God in our, over our lives. Yeah. And I think I've seen God as God's grace in such a more beautiful light as 
as we've become parents yeah. and as we become, um, you know, parents of two specifically, it's like, God is so gracious. Like yeah. he's number one. He's not mad at us when we, yeah. it's like, like when we can't take two hours out of our day to like just devote to praying and reading the Bible, you know, he, he takes delight when we, when he sees our hearts longing for him and us in the middle of the, mo- in, 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 in like middle moments of our day, like saying a prayer and committing our hearts to him. So I think that, you know, it's so important for us to understand that with each season of our lives, the way that we interact and see God, it will change, but it's only, it can, if we allow it, it'll just keep on getting more and more beautiful. Absolutely. As long as we just continue to commit ourselves to intimacy with him, I think what happens for a lot of people is that they get so discouraged and they start missing the season before so badly that it kind of puts them in a puts them in like a a self inflicted wilderness. Mm. And it's like, God, where are you? Yeah. God, why aren't you yeah. here? Yeah. God, why don't I feel you the same way? God, why aren't I experiencing the same way that I used to? But he's like, oh, I want to experience, I want you to encounter me. I want to encounter you in a whole new way. But all you got to do is just open up your heart to me. All you have to do is continue to like show me your, like uh, create a space for me to come and fill your life. You know, and I think that's what you've done so well. I know that you've, you know, let's talk about the, you know, the struggle and the frustration that, you know, we have both experienced um, as we, acclimate to being parents and the responsibilities that we have because i know we've had many 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 conversations about how frustrating it is sometimes to be to be a parent uh to be a parent and not to have you know all the time in the world spiritual discipline maintaining spiritual discipline when you're a parent and especially like in the earlier years when your kids are so self-reliant on you yeah i think for me that was really hard of the moment having my first child, mm. you are up every two hours feeding. Yeah. You know, you are, you're like barely taking a shower most days. You are like, you're not taking a shower <laughs> yeah. like we, as frequently as you should. And <laughs> TMI, I don't yeah. know. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> every mom can relate to that statement. And if you can't, then God bless you. Yeah. But this is the reality. I, I was just thinking, when you were talking, I was thinking about our conversation we literally had the other day, mm. yesterday, as a matter of fact, when we said, you know, we have got to prioritize time with the Lord as yes. a family. Yes. And the Lord spoke to us and it was so powerful. I had a I had a vision in the prayer and the vision was Brian and I, when we didn't have children, we had dug wells yes. with prayer. Like we used to sit down and read scripture out loud together yeah. and pray for like an hour plus out oh, yeah. loud together. Yeah. And we dug wells. And then we were in, we moved into a season of having children when we weren't able to pray like that as often. Yeah. And yeah. so we were withdrawing from that well that we dug with the Lord. Mm-hmm. And the Lord showed me the vision that we had withdrew, withdrew, withdrew. And now that well is empty and it's time to dig a new well. Yeah. And so there's seasons where there's grace, man, there is grace for literally all you have time to do is to say a prayer in your heart. Yes. Like literally like a, say a prayer in your heart or cry out to God when you literally just need sleep. Yeah. You know, like I, one of the things that changed after having kids is my dependency on the Lord. Oh yeah. Definitely. When I, when we didn't have kids, like nothing will make you cry out to the Lord more when you have a, a baby with a fever, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. nothing will make you cry out to the God more when your kids won't stay in their bed at night and you're not sleeping. Yes. You that's know? True. And so like my dependency, dependency changed, yeah. but I, I think that practically like your strategy and your intentionality has to change as well if you want to spend time with the Lord. Yes, and I that's think that, important. That's real important. I think important. That's, that's the same principle applies with your spouse, yes. right? The same yes. principle applies with your spouse. Like if you're not intentional with your spouse yeah. um, after having kids, like it's like, yeah, you're around them. Yeah, we go to church. Yeah, we all we know all the Bible verses. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. But like have you actually had quality time? Yes. 
And so, so you know, your intentionality has to change after having kids. And that's okay. God is gracious. He's not mad about it. He's actually so happy that you are taking care of his children. Yes, that's right. That's what you're doing for him. Yeah. You're raising his babies. Yeah. So he's not mad that you are, you're overwhelmed with all of the tasks that are required taking care of his babies because they're his babies. Yeah, 100%. So so that's his perspective. His, her, his perspective isn't shame on you for not getting into the prayer closet because that's how we feel. Yeah. That's how I'll feel. Yes. and But that's not God's demeanor towards no, us. No, that's not. You said something so good about intentionality. You have to become increasingly intentional about your relationship with God after you have after you have kids, you have to be intentional about continuing to cultivate your relationship with the Lord. Because like any relationship, if you don't spend time with the Lord, it grows cold. Yeah. Now, his love for you does not grow cold by any means, but you become less sensitive yeah. to him. Yeah. Just like when if I'm not connecting with Sonia uh, the way that I should be connecting. The lovey-dovey to, feelings yes, are not present. The lovey-dovey feelings are not <laughs> present and it's not, yeah. you know, and this is the thing. What happens is I have to I have to start I have to start sowing seeds. Yeah. I have to start yeah. sowing seeds. And the beautiful thing about the Lord is the Lord is always waiting for us. Yeah. Like the Lord is always waiting for us. He isn't like human beings where yeah. it might take a long time. He's like, I'm ready for you. Yeah. I'm ready to receive you. I'm ready to encounter you. I'm ready to speak to you. I'm ready for all those things. I just want you to come back to me and be intentional about your relationship yeah. with me. And I just want to say too, I want to speak to every single person mm-hmm. or married person that doesn't have kids. Yeah. You know, the same principle applies to any circumstance that makes it harder for you to be in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. You know, for us, it's not that our kids are blocking the way, but circumstances have yeah. changed and it has made it harder for us to have those spiritual disciplines. And that applies with so many different circumstances. You don't have to have kids to experience that. Yeah. So take these principles of what we're saying. Be intentional. Yes. You be know, intentional. be intentional. Don't receive shame. You yes. know, find time. Yes. Find you know, time. and there's grace for seasons when it's harder for you or you don't pray as much. Yeah. God is good. He's God good. Is good. He yeah. welcomes you back anytime. It's like, it's like your grandma. It's like, if you don't talk to her for two months and you show up, she's going to come feed you, treat you like she, you know, she was just, you were there yesterday. Yeah. You know, it's like our God is so good to us. Yeah. So I just wanted to speak to that, you know, people who necessarily don't have kids or, you know, aren't in this season yet. You know, these principles still apply. Yes. I love what Jeremiah 29, 13 says. It says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. You know, like in any season of your life, no matter what season you are in, if you seek God with all your heart, you will find him. You will find him. God longs to be found. God longs to be seen. God longs to have relationship with you. So I pray that you find freedom in that, that you find freedom in the fact that like parents talking specifically to parents that even as you're making this, you've made this transition to like parenthood, God is so available to you. And like your relationship, this is the fact of the matter. Like, let's just be honest. The way that you relate to God will change as a parent. Yeah. It will change. Like you're not going to relate to God the same way you did when you had no kids, Mm -hmm. when you were, when you were, yeah, honestly, when you were able to think about yourself more, <laughs> because the thing about <laughs> having kids is that, you know, they make you, they like either you willingly become selfless or they make you selfless. We've experienced a little bit of both uh, in yeah. our two and a half years yeah. of, of parenthood. Toddlers are, I read some article once. And she was like, toddlers are like dictators. <laughs> <laughs> they demand their needs and yeah. their wants, and you are compelled yeah. to follow them. I heard another person say that they're like terrorists. Yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> was a pastor. But we don't subscribe to that thought. <laughs> we don't subscribe to that thought. But anyways, back to the original <laughs> topic. You know, this no, is a children thing. are a blessing from the Lord. They are. And God understands that they're a blessing. And God understands the requirement. That that's man, that's the thing. I pray that brings free freedom to you. That God understands the requirement of a parent. And so God is not looking down at you like, 
why didn't you spend seven hours with me today? Why didn't you spend six hours with yeah, me today? Yeah, like an insecure and friend. No, God understands the requirement that it takes to be a parent. But this is the thing I want to really encourage you, you. And the Lord spoke to me, spoke this to me um, before uh, we had children. And it was that the term was abiding presence. God wants to dwell with us all day long. And for so, I think for so many of us, we view our communion with the Lord in like a segmented, segregated hour or long segment that we get through during a day. And yes, there's a beautiful place for undivided devotion to the Lord. It is so important. But this is the thing. I think there's an even more beautiful place whenever we start to bring God into our everyday life. When we start to bring our relationship with the Lord into our work life, into our parenting, into our drives, into into our workouts. You know, I'll be I'll be, you know, I go to a group workout class in the morning. <laughs> I do. I'm not even gonna lie. Hey, this is the truth, baby. Hey, I'll be on the versa. <laughs> I'll be on the versa hitting it like <laughs> You know <laughs> I will. I know. I'm I sure will. you're terrifying everybody. No, I do place. it under my. I do it under my breath, so I don't scare. <laughs> I don't scare. I would. Hey, one, if the Lord, if the Lord, if I had the unction, I yeah, would. Yeah, and then you just laying on the ground. I, hey, but seriously, like I want to bring God into my workouts. Like God, you you can yeah, have it all. Like good. I want communion with you in every single aspect and facet of my life. Amen. So I just want to encourage you with that today, like parents. Bring him into every area of your life, mom, while you're doing the dishes, while you're changing a diaper, yeah, dad, while, while you're, you're working, dad, while you're, while you're, you know, while you're paying bills, while you're, whatever you're doing, while you're taking a shower, like bring God in. He wants to be in. He wants to infiltrate every yeah, area. Yeah, that's good. So Brian, would you say, you would you say your relationship with the Lord changed for the better or worse after having kids? Once I stopped feeling shame, it changed for the better. Amen. That's right. How about you? I think I'm still getting there. Yeah. I think I'm the, on the precipice of, you know, really not experiencing shame for how my intimacy or practical, like, dates with the Lord um, have changed. And I'm really grateful for that. Thank you all so much for joining us here on the Growing With The Nearest podcast. Hey, we always want to remind you that the reason why we're here is because we are on a journey to learn and grow with you in the areas of faith, faith purpose, purpose, and, and relationship. So thank you. If you like this podcast and you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe and comment on this uh, video. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or any other listening platform, make sure that you give us a rate, that you rate us, you comment um, so that more people can get access to this podcast. We love you all so much and we will see you next week on the Growing With The Nearest podcast.